Judges chapter number 18. Judges chapter number 18. We're going to look at a few different verses tonight. Judges 18, and let's start reading verse number 7. The Bible says, And also by the hand of the prophet, I'm sorry, I'm in the wrong chapter. Get the right chapter. Guess when you put your bookmark in, you should follow where you put the bookmark, right? Trying to get there. All right. Then the five departed and came to Laish, and saw that the people that were therein, how they dwelt perilous, after the manner of the Zidonians, quiet and secure. And there was no magistrate in the land that might put them to shame in anything. And they were far from the Zidonians and had no business with any man. And they were far from the Zidonians and had no business with any man. Let's jump down to verse number 27. The Bible goes on down to say, And they took things which Micah had made, and the priests which he had, and came unto Laish, unto a people that were quiet and secure. Quiet and secure. And they smote them with the edge of the sword, and burnt the city with fire. And there was no deliverer, because it was far from, because it was far from Zidon. And they had no business with any man. And it was in the valley that lieth by uh, Beth Rehob. And they, they built a city and dwelt therein. And they called the name of the city Dan, after the name of Dan their father, who was born unto Israel. Howbeit the name of the city was Elash at the first. And the children of Dan set up graven images. And Jonathan, the son of Gershom, the son of Manasseh, he and his sons were priests to, uh, to the tribe of Dan until the day of captivity of the land. And they set them up, Micah's graven images, which he had made all the time that they were in the house of God in Shiloh. And both of two different times in the same chapter, we read that they were far from Zidon, and they were far from the Zidonians. I want to just preach on this thought for a little bit tonight. Living on the outer edge. Living on the outer edge. Amen. And uh, there is a danger that comes when we live on the outer edge when it comes to the things of God. Living there on that outer perimeter, on living on the border, being on the edge. Amen. Uh, it's all, but it's worth repeating. Uh, uh, most of you have probably uh, heard about the little boy who had, a, had an experience that during the middle of the night, he fell out of bed. Boom. I don't know how many of you have uh, ever experienced that in your life where you fell out of bed, but I didn't grow up in a carpeted home. My parents loved hardwood floors. Now that I'm an adult, I appreciate them even more. I understand their love for hardwood floors. And so uh, there were many nights as a boy that I experienced that thud and falling out of bed. And some of you may know what it's like hearing that thud in the middle of the night. Everything's quiet, you know, in the middle of the night. And you hear that thump, thud. And, uh, you know, mom and dad get up and they take off running down dark hallways because they know what has happened. And so, uh, you know, what, what's happened? And you go and you ask, well, what, what is that thing that, that, that you fell out of bed? Brother Eli, the answer often is, well, I got too close to the edge. It's pretty simple. A good way to fall out of bed is living too close to the edge, sleeping on the edge. And so, uh, uh, you know, I, I, I think that we as a church, we need to realize that there is a danger of living too close to the edge. 
That I find that in the church world, a lot of people want to live as close to the edge as what they can. They don't want to be too involved. They don't want to be too committed. They love that safety net of just being on the edge. They feel comfortable. Uh, but I need to tell you that there is danger in living on the edge. Amen. God wants us to get in and get involved. Amen. What a privilege we have to be in a church. Amen. What a privilege it is when we can get in where the anointing is, where the gifts of the Spirit are moving and flowing. Amen. Uh, uh, we don't have to live on the edge. And I don't know why, but some people love to live on the perimeter of spirituality. Amen. Uh, church isn't like a buffet line where we line up and we pick out what we want to choose and what we want, what we want to have. Amen. But church and experience with Jesus Christ is, is that we're in it to win it. Amen. The good and the bad. Uh, you know, we, we live in a generation, amen, where young people are being brought up that they pick and they choose. They want all the high things of life. Amen. Life isn't made up like that. Amen. Uh, there's everything in it. And sometimes when we get involved in church and the things of God, we think when we can pick and choose what we want and we live on the parameters of things. When God is calling us to get involved, be right in the center. Amen. Choose you this day whom you will serve. But it goes farther than that. Amen. It's being involved. It's getting ourselves to the place where the Holy Ghost is working and moving in our life. Amen. The church is full, filled with a lot of spectators and not enough participators. Amen. God help us not to live on the perimeters. Amen. Oftentimes it can be, and I am getting somewhere, let me just say a few things. You know, even when it comes to the preaching of the Word, it can be easy to pick and choose what we want to chew up and swallow. Amen. And other things we discard because we don't want it. Uh, but there's a danger in living on the edge of only picking and choosing what we want when it comes to the Word of God. Did you ever notice that typically if you have a blanket, you have some type of a cloth, uh, uh, a shirt, you have pants, you have uh, whatever it is, a shirt, whatever that is. Did you ever notice that usually the first place things start getting frayed is where at? The edges. Amen. And so uh, I think that there's a lesson to be learned in that. Amen. When the world is beginning to fray apart, as Sister Rachel, you said about that prayer request, you just turn on the news and you watch it. It's fraying apart at the peripheral place. I don't want to be living on the peripheral edge. Amen. Where everything is fraying and coming apart. But I want to be in the center where God's keeping it all together. Amen. Where it's knit and woven very well together. So God help us as a church to say, I'm getting in the middle of things. The Bible says that they were far from the Zidonians. Amen. They were far from where they needed to be. A quiet place. Seemed like a secure place. But it wasn't a place where God wanted them to be. It was easy to bring in the idolatry. It was easy to bring in worldliness. Amen. And because of that, amen, uh, they found destruction. Uh, God help us tonight to be right in the center of God's will. When the presence of God is moving, to be right in the center of it. Amen. When God is call us to be part of a church, not to live on the peripheral edges of the church, but all to be involved in it, right where God wants us to be. Amen. When the Holy Ghost is moving, right in the center of the move of the Holy Ghost. Amen. I love the story that's told by a Sunday school teacher. She said this. She said to her students, she said, I'm giving you a piece of paper. She said, on one side, I want you to write everything about God. I want you to write everything about the Holy Ghost. And when you get to the other side, I want you to write things about the devil on it. She said she, she walked around, she looked at her class, and one little boy, she picked up his paper, and she noticed that there was all kinds of things that the Holy Ghost had been doing in his life all the way through. Then she wanted to find out how the devil was attacking. She ran and turned over to the other side, and on the other side of his paper was more writing about the Holy Ghost. She said, son, you didn't do what I told you to do. He said, well, i got to tell you, when I started thinking about the Holy Ghost and the things of God, I didn't have time to think about the devil. Amen. Well, we in the center of God, amen, and we get in the center of God's will, when we get in the center of the moving of God, there won't be time to think about the devil. All we can think about is the working and the moving of the Holy Ghost. Amen. I'm talking about being in the center tonight. 
Amen. Right in the center. When we're the center, amen, we realize that God is our peace, our joy, our purpose. Amen. When we get right in the middle of things. Amen. Some folks say, I, 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 I just have to take a back seat. I, 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 there's things in my life that's popped up. The Word of God says, the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul hath no pleasure in him. We can't draw back. Amen. we got to be in the middle of serving God. I'm speaking to a church tonight that it's easy to get distracted in life. Amen. Life can get busy, but we have to stay right in the middle of God working and moving in our life. It's interesting, when we read the book of Ephesians chapter number 6, we read about the armor that God has designed for us to wear as soldiers. And we look at all those pieces of armor that God has given us. But there's one thing that I notice about that armor, that there is nothing to cover the back. You know why there's nothing to cover the back? Because God desires for us to go forward. God desires for us to move on. He doesn't want us to go back. It's only time to march forward and upward. Amen. There's a danger when we start moving back. Some folks may say, well, I'm just, I'm just taking a back seat. I'm just standing still right now. Amen. I'm just watching. Amen. When it comes to the things of God, we can't take time to stand still. There's no time for watching. God wants us to be moving forward. Right in the center. The danger is when we start letting go. Did you ever hold on to something and all of a sudden you try to lose your grip and it just to loosen up to give your fingers a little bit of rest? We often find that our grip slips and it's harder to grip on when we let up. Amen. God wants us to be pressing in. I press toward the mark. I want to ask you tonight, it might seem like a simple thought, a simple message, but I want to ask you, are you pressing? Are you moving forward? Are you living in the center of the things of God? Amen. Are you living in the center of the Holy Ghost? Or are you finding yourself somewhere on the peripheral side, living on the edges, living on the outside? Amen. God, help us. Amen. To keep moving and pressing on. Amen. Everybody, amen, should want to grow, not just want to watch someone else grow. think the church needs a revival. Amen. We need folks that will weep with the church and will fight with the church. But I need to tell you that if you don't weep with the church, you don't fight with the church, you're not going to fly with the church. Amen. We've got to be in the middle of it. Amen. We've got to put our armor on. Amen. We've got to move forward and upward. Did you ever notice that when you go to a pond, that the first thing about a pond that freezes is what? The outside, the peripheral. And then it makes it way, its way in as it freezes. There's no time to live on the outside where the cold can affect us. We need to be on the inside where the Holy Ghost is working and moving. And we're on fire for God. God help us to move the center of things. Do you ever notice that there's a disease called diabetes? And diabetes, there's one thing that I've noticed about diabetes is it affects the peripheral parts of the body, and the peripheral arteries. Uh, it, 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 there's things that's happening on the inside, obviously, but the first uh, demonstration of diabetes working in the body is, 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 is those outward parts, those fingers, those hands, those, uh, those, those legs, those arms. Uh, because you know why? Because those are the things that are farthest away from the pumping of the heart. And you look at your toes, they're a long way from your heart. You ever look at that? Here's my heart. I know I'm a short fella. But they're still long, it's still a long way away from my toes in, in, in comparison to everything else in my body. And so when we begin to look at that, the heart pumping and squeezing and working, and it's trying to get blood to all those peripheral parts of the body, but, 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 but the, the distance between the, the, the toes and, and the heart, amen, and there's some restrictions there, amen. And I, I need to tell you this, uh, when we 
are serving God, we need to be at the heart of serving God. Amen. We need to be at the heart of His church. Amen. The heartbeat of where His people are. Amen. Uh, so that no disease of sin can get a hold of us. I want to be close to the heartbeat of God where He's flowing through me and working through me because I'm in this to win it tonight. Here it is. Uh, they, 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 they were far from the Zidonians. Two different times the Word of God says that. They were far from the place where they should be, the place where God wanted them to be, the place where they were going to honor and serve God. They were far from it. How close are you in your relationship with God tonight? I'm not talking to a bunch of sinners tonight. I'm talking to folks that love God. I'm not here to step on your toes. I'm here to challenge each of us. How close are we? Because we can't allow ourselves to drift and navigate away from being in the center of where God wants us to be. Amen. The heart of the church pumps. Amen. And I want to be right where it pumps. Amen. I want to be there when things are happening in the church. Let me tell you, when folks are worshiping, I want to worship. Amen. When folks are praying, I want to pray. When folks are crying, I want to cry. Amen. When folks are shouting, I want to shout. Amen. I want to be in the heartbeat of where things are happening. Amen. I want it to affect me. Amen. I want when God's in the house, I want to feel Him the same way that others are feeling Him as He's in the house. Let me tell you, the worst thing that we could ever do is come to church but not be involved in church. Amen. Not be involved in the moving of God. Amen. I don't want to just sit on a, on a Pentecostal pew and watch people shout and wonder what are they doing. Amen. I don't want to be the one that when I are getting their hankies out, waving them. Amen. Wonder what's happening. Amen. But I want to be right there where the Holy Ghost is working and moving right in the center of things. Amen. 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 It's interesting. In 2 Samuel chapter number 11, the Word of God speaks about the death of Abimelech. And this is something that's interesting to me because when he dies, here is this mighty woman, a, a, a mighty warrior, and there's a woman that, that, that has smitten him when she casts a millstone from the wall and kills him. Now, I'm sure there's a lot of details that can be thought of in, this, uh, in, in, in the death of, uh, of, of, of Abimelech. But I have to think, what is this mighty warrior doing on the peripheral side of things? If he had been in the center of things and away from the wall, he would have never experienced that death. Sometimes we find ourselves in places where we should not be. Amen. Why would we? the wall why was from the rest of the troops I don't know but I need to tell you that we cannot afford to be removed from the body of Christ because when we're removed from it we set ourselves up in a danger zone where we can die a death that is not a death we desire to die God help us tonight that we keep ourselves in the place where God is working and moving no, it's easy for people to get offended. It's easy for people to fall out. It's easy for people to find excuses. Amen. There's no one in the church perfect. Hello. If you're looking at me being perfect, you better look in a different direction because I'll never meet your standards. Amen. The only one who will is Jesus Christ. Amen. But there's a lot of folks that get their eyes on a lot of things. Amen. Besides Jesus. Amen. And as they get their feelings hurt, amen, they get away from where God wants them to be and you become a great place for the enemy to attack you. You isolate yourself. You're alone. Amen. You're away from the heartbeat of where things are happening. Amen. You're living on the frayed edges when God desires you to be in the middle of the working of the Spirit. Amen. You know, I think as a pastor, I worry when folks don't come to church. I don't worry because I'm worried about our church existing and going on. God is faithful. We have a wonderful church. God has blessed us. But I worry because I'm worried about people's spirit. When we don't see them in services, when we don't see them entering in, it's concerning because they're moving from the center of things to the perfect side of things. 
the outskirt things, or when things start un un unraveling or fraying, that's where it happens. Oh God, keep us in the safety net of where the heartbeat of God is happening, where the Holy Ghost is working and moving. I think the greatest thing for revival, and I know that we need to pray. We need that. That's part of what I'm getting to. Amen. The part of the church growing, and I want the church growing, and people giving, and people give very well here. Amen. And I appreciate your giving. Amen. But I don't think that's the thing that's going to bring us the real growth that we really want in our church. I think the thing is, is when people start getting in the center. And folks are so mature in faith because they're in the center of things. They said, I've moved past the peripheral edges of things. Amen. And I'm getting where the heartbeat of God is happening. I'm getting where the Holy Ghost is pumping and moving. That's where I want to be. Amen. That's the real growth in the church. Amen. It'll set us on fire. Amen. That we'll go out and evangelize the world. Amen. It'll get us to the place. Amen. Where we'll be living the right way. Amen. Giving the right way. Amen. Yielding the right way because we're in the center of where God wants us to be. You see, when we look at Simon Peter, the Word of God, we look at him and he's in a dangerous place when he followed far off on the peripheral side. Amen. Uh, 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 here he is warming himself by the enemy's fire instead of being around the deity of Jesus Christ. Amen. There's a danger in that. Amen. Uh, 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 when we get to that place and there's all kinds of things out there in the world that we can satisfy ourselves with. There's all kinds of clubs or all kinds of events. Amen. In this modern age, of, of internet and Facebook and social media. Amen. Events pop up on the calendar all over the place and you can be so busy doing all kinds of things. But I have to ask you, in the middle of all those things folks get themselves involved with, amen, will they be asking you how much you love Jesus? Will they be edifying the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? Amen. We can warm ourselves by a lot of fires. Amen. But I don't want to follow in a distance. I want to be where the presence of God is. Amen. I want to be where the kingdom of God is being taught about and preached about. Amen. It keeps me in a safety zone. Amen. Praise God. But David said this, For a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord than to dwell in the tents of, 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 of wickedness. You see, Zion was the oldest of the Phoenician cities. It was dominated, it dominated the Phoenician coast. It was a place of power and provision and protection. It was fortified by natural things in its surroundings. It's a type of church. It's a type of the people that are in the church. But Laash was a place that was conquered and a city that was burned. And I tell you tonight. There's a lot of folks that want to dwell on Laash. But there's nothing there but ruin and destruction. There's a lot of folks that are moving away from Zidon, the place that's a natural fortress. God has a fortress here for us tonight. Hey Amen. A place where there is protection and there is deliverance, where there is hope and where there is help, where there is a refuge. Amen. The Word of God says the name of the Lord is a strong tower that the righteous can run into and be saved. Amen. I want to tell you something tonight. The safest place for you is in the church. The safest place for your marriage is in the church. The safest place for your family is in the church. Not living on some peripheral edge. Amen. I talk to folks all the time and they tell me I'm a Christian. I love God. Where are you going to church? Oh, I don't go to church. Amen. You're living on a peripheral edge somewhere. Amen. That's a dangerous place to live. Amen. If you're really concerned about your soul. Amen. If you're really concerned about the things that are important to you, your, your family, your marriage, your children, your grandchildren. Amen. The place that you need to be kept. Amen. Is in the safety net of the King of God. Amen. Where we grow our faith. Where the Holy Ghost is moving. I know the Holy Ghost can move anywhere that, uh, that we are. Amen. But there's something about when the people of God get together and God
God has commanded it, and God has orchestrated it, and God has designed it. It's there in this place that we're in the center where the heartbeat of God is, where the Holy Ghost is working and moving. It's a safety net for us and everything that's precious and important to us. Amen. You know, can I just share something with you? Maybe from a pastor's perspective. Sometimes it's hard. We want to keep up with folks when we miss Sunday. Sometimes it's just hard when you're doing lots of things. But I heard a pastor say this, and I thought it was good. And this is not anything. This is to me as well as it is to me. pastor said, you know what? He said, if all the folks who just come to church and get involved, they've been so involved, amen, the pastor would really know that they weren't there because of the amens, because of the clapping, the worshiping. Amen. I know this when you're not here. But for each of us to have such an impact because we're plugged in, that when we do this, and things happen that we'll miss, but when we sit, events happen. Things happen. But we're not living on the peripheral edge. We're living right in the center. And folks really miss when folks in the center aren't there. Amen? Amen. Just being in the center of God's will. In God's plan. Amen. Getting so wrapped up. The Bible says that here they were in Laos. And they were, they were careless. You see, when we get far from the church, we get careless. When we get far from the refuge that God has provided for us, we get careless. It's easy to watch things and read things and hear things and, and uh, just even get careless about our walk with God. But when we're there in the center of things, all the care that we give to the things of God. Let's not live careless. Let's not live far from the natural refuge that God has provided for us in His presence and in the church. Amen. But let's be right where the presence of God is so that we're not careless with spiritual things. And you know what? The Bible also says two different places that they were quiet. Now, I don't know about you, but I believe in Pentecost. I believe in the move of the Spirit. Amen. I'm okay with hand clapping. I'm okay with singing. I'm okay with hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Sometimes, Brother Eli, you just shout out the name Jesus. Amen. I like when things get a, a, a little a little loud. Amen. We're excited about the things of God. Amen. When we when we move far away from the natural habitation that God has provided for our souls, Amen. It's easy to get quiet, isn't it? But oh, when we get in the presence, you folks know what it's like. Amen. When the Holy Ghost gets to gets to move it. Amen. Whether you sing on tune or not, you start clapping those hands and you sing a little louder. Amen. You throw up your hands and you just worship God. Amen. Because we're excited. But when we get far from the presence of God, you may notice that you're quiet. That's not there anymore. Amen. But thank God for the house of God, the presence of God, the natural protection of God. Amen. Where we can verbalize and we can worship God Almighty. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Living on the edges. Folks start getting quiet. The Bible says that they have become secure. But they became secure trusting in all the wrong things. Let me give you a news flash. I've seen it over and over and over again. You may not have your job tomorrow. I may not have my job. You may not have your health. I may not have my health. I may not have all the things around me that brings me security and comfort. Nor may you. It can change than a snap of a finger. But the real security is found in being right in the center of what God is wanting. Where are we living tonight? The Bible says that they had no magistrate. There was no law. There was no order. You folks know me long enough. 
I'm not a dictator. I don't dictate over your life. You can question me about anything that I preach. I will give you the best biblical reason that I can. Amen. We don't live in some uh, some cult or, or, or some crazy place. But I need to tell you that I have a responsibility as a pastor to preach the Word of God, to preach truth. And when the Word of God is given, it is truth and it is boundary for our life. What did God give to Moses? He gave him a place where he was to set boundaries. And so for me as a pastor, I have the responsibility, amen, to set boundaries for us by the Word of God of how we live, how we conduct ourselves, what is pleasing to God. But here are these folks that moved outside the boundaries of having any magistrate. Amen. When we're in the house of God, we hear the Word of God. Amen. We have the accountability to others uh, to before the presence of God. Amen. You're accountable for the Word of God that's preached to you. Amen. And it helps you. So don't live on the outside, but live on the inside where there is boundaries. Amen. Thank God for God-given leadership that is in the church. Amen. I can't save you. Amen. But I can preach the Word of God. Amen. That will save your soul. Amen. Through faith in Jesus Christ. Thank God for safety tonight. They have broke their fellowship. It was just them. No magistrate, no fellowship. See, but as a result, Dan came upon them and burned them with fire and changed the name of their city and set up idolatry. See, thank God for the place where you and I can have in the church, in the presence of God, where there is protection, where there is perseverance, where there is purpose, where there is peace. This is your life when you live in the center of what God has designed for you. I need to tell you, church is for everybody. Church is for everybody. Amen. God has designed it. Amen. So when we live in that place, you see that Laash was in the valley of Beth Rehob, and we find that that is a valley of indecision. Amen. When we constantly cannot make up our mind if we're going to be faithful in the place that God wants us to be. Amen. But by the grace of God, let's stay right in the center of His will, right where His heartbeat is. The sister Beth will come to the piano. I like what Hebrews 12, verse number 22 says. But ye are come to Mount Zion. And unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven. Hey, Amen. I want you to know something. That when we come to the house of God, all of us have a past. But God's not concerned about your past as well as your present. And where you are in Him. Amen. Now, Zion. I want to live there, Brother Doug. Brother Craig, I want to live there. I want to be close to where God is. I want to be in the center of things. Tonight, I just want to encourage you. You folks are faithful. Amen. Sunday night church folks being here in the presence of God. Amen. I want you to know the plan and the purpose is this. is because you're not living on the outside edge, but you're living in the middle. Where you hear the heartbeat of God, where He's pumping and flowing through you. That when things are freezing up on the outer edge, God is still keeping you very much. Amen. In the state that He wants you in. Amen. When things are fraying and unraveling, amen, there you are in the center where things are still woven together and God is keeping it intact. Amen. That is why we're here. Amen. Here they are to the valley of Elish. Amen. Indecision. Here they are living far away from a Zion, the Zidonians. When God wanted them to live in a place of natural protection, you're protected tonight, brother. You're protected tonight, sister. 
Amen. It's a place of perseverance. It's a place of purpose. It's a place of life. Would you gather in tonight?